At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is the Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. We're welcoming back one of my favoriteest people in the world, Annalise Cherie. And she is an alignment uh, healer and coach. And basically, she's bringing a whole bunch of ancient healing techniques and to the masses in a more absorbable, digestible way for the benefit of bringing you all into alignment. And today we're going to be talking about energy healing and its practical approaches for day-to-day use of like dealing with like stress, anxiety, and the different things that are relatable, like why you need to get a healing. So welcome, Annalise. Thank you for popping in today. Of Always course. a pleasure. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Thanks for being here and taking the time to watch this. Um, as Christina said, I really focused my practice on Um, ancient healing arts with modern application. So it's kind of my mission in this life to um, make these super, super beneficial practices uh, for stress management, uh, for self-awareness, et cetera, et cetera. And we're going to get into all of that um, as a really plausible tool to turn to for self-regulation, for uh, stress management, for healing, for um, all the things, if you will. Uh, I really um, just want people to be open to these things. We can start there. (laughs) Yeah, no, and and it's beautiful. And I think that a lot of people get uh, maybe a little overwhelmed uh, because they seem weird or different or these techniques come from different cultures or beliefs that vary from uh, their own. Uh, but it doesn't mean that the tools and the techniques don't have practical uses that can be very beneficial. And we live in a time when you can bring in a whole bunch of of different modalities together it's like a chef that has studied all of these different cuisines and now is doing these fusions and sometimes the fusions are the best right Uh, yeah definitely (laughs) (laughs) yeah so you know I think that the subject that we chose today is um I guess this is the best way to say it like normalization of spiritual practice okay um because I always really stress to my clients that these practices are not limited to just a grouping of people with belief systems. Mm -hmm. This is part of our operation system as human beings. Yeah. Um, We all have energy that moves through us and we all have the capability to modulate that energy with the choices of what we think of what we watch of what we expose ourselves to. And when you do these practices, you're actually um, giving yourself an opportunity to, Uh, make more conscious decisions and also have more conscious awareness around why you are experiencing life the way that you are. So the best way um, we can just kind of jump into this, um, in my practice alignment coaching, alignment healing, the reason why I um, use that phrase is it is kind of a combination of um, Reiki, which is of Japanese lineage, Huna, which is of Hawaiian lineage, um, amongst other uh, practices, breath mm-hmm. work, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it's a nice little combination, just kind of tailored to the individual's needs. Um, but ultimately, when I'm doing a healing on somebody, uh, what are we doing? <laughs> and that's what I want to normalize for you. So you understand that there's nothing actually wooey hooey about this it's it's very much part of our physiology very much part of our bodies etc so if you haven't heard of chakras okay um we're starting very very basic we're starting very very basic um these are energy points where we input and output all of our emotional experiences so i have kind of categorize this down again to modernize it the upper three chakras so throat third eye and crown uh, these deal with the thought form 
Mm -hmm. These deal with uh, our unconscious mind, how we're seeing and perceiving ourselves, more or less the thought realm, the thinking mind, okay? Yeah. Um, both consciously and unconsciously. The lower three chakras, they deal more with physical reality. So mm-hmm. oftentimes um, your, your physical body itself will come up down here, um, how you're interacting with life, you know, the certain decisions that you're making, career path, all of these things. And then your heart is kind of the brain or energy energy that kind of unites the mind and the body if that Mm -hmm. makes sense so um i start there because this actually matters a lot um (laughs) your thoughts are not thoughts they're frequencies Mm -hmm. and whatever it is that you're thinking is going to bring in the emotional experiences that you're having so what you believe you will see what you are um seeking you will find etc etc so It's just understanding that we do have, we actually do have a ton of chakra systems. I think it's like 42 like energy points in total. Even more than that. I mean, if you go on to like the acupuncturist, um, like every place where you can pop in a needle is Mm -hmm. pretty much a mini micro chakra. That's why it matters which way you turn the needle um, to either let energy in or let energy out. Mm -hmm. So those all have different points, you know. Absolutely. So if you think of that, you know. Case in point, another example of how and why this stuff matters. So, um, yes, so more or less what we do is when we open up the energy and what all that means is that we are, how do you normalize this? (laughs) You're going into um, somebody's emotional body. So actually the best way to explain this is we all have connective tissue. myofascia tissue, I believe is what it's called. And there actually are electromagnetic currents that move through the entire body, not just the brain. And your body stores memory. Your body stores physical experiences, emotions, etc. So when you're doing something like Reiki or prana healing, acupuncture, even massage therapy, these all fall into the same grouping of energy movement. Yeah, so and energy yeah. movement mm-hmm. and also like it's a good to, to like going back on that to help normalize it. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think there's anybody that's watching, or if you pass this on to somebody, feel free to share so that we can have a bigger audience here, you know. <laughs> um, but like, if uh, if your muscles are tight, you'd say, okay, you need to get a massage, you know, or you need to go get a chiropractic adjustment or something mm-hmm. like that. But we're energy. You know, our bodies are energy and Mm -hmm. that there's constantly this energy that's flowing through us. And I think even an easier way of saying it is like, I don't know if you've ever been to like a child's birthday party or balloons have been around and you kind of rub your feet on on the floor and then you can shock people. Have you, has anybody ever had that? Or you rub a balloon and you (laughs) shock people? Where's that energy coming from? It's a, you know, you're moving and then you're, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Uh, Christina is completely correct. You know, everything actually is vibrating. It's not solid matter. And so if you really were to break it down to nanoparticles, um, that is actually what we are. It's just the frequency is vibrating so fast that it appears like solid mass. Mm -hmm. Um, So when it feels like it, it feels like it. But in the truth, it's actually not. And that blows my mind every time. But it's not. So not really sitting on this chair. (laughs) Um, But with that being said, you know, massage therapy, uh, energy work, Reiki, whatever type of modality that you're using, these things are in place to help push stuck energy along. You know, it's like, oh, I'm feeling tension in my shoulders or my neck. There are reasons for that. Yeah. So it's almost like massage therapy can address the physical pretty quick. But um, energy practices, they address the physical, but also the emotional So you can see as the practitioner when you're working on your clients, you can see why the tension is there. You can see what the emotional blockage is. And, um, you know, it's kind of hard for people to understand, like, how is that possible? Like, how is that normal? Well, guess what it is like. And and, and I really want to stress this point. All of us are capable of these things. This isn't like some people have special abilities and others don't. This is a matter of realizing what we're capable of as human beings, Mm -hmm. what exists within our operation system, and how to lean into that and learn it. You know, I have the ability to place my hand on somebody and physically experience like what they are holding on to and what they are going through, not because I have some special ability, 
but because I've taken the time to learn my Mm -hmm. energetic imprint, if that makes sense. I've taken the time to really um, learn the intuitive nature of being a human being, which we all have. Yeah. So, and, and that ability that you can use and you can grab energy from elsewhere and Mm -hmm. channel that. I mean, I think that, you know, giving a couple examples of like the tangibleness of this is like, I mean, what are martial artists doing is they're honing in energy. They're literally pulling in energy by certain movements and things that they do so that they can have more force with having less force. Yeah. Right. You know, the ability to break all of those blocks at once or, or pieces of wood or, you know, to hold that energy, you know, they've just understood how to work with it. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, we're at this time period where more people are going to start understanding. And I think the more that there's an understanding, I mean, not too long ago, people did not dream that a big piece of metal could float through the sky. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and now you look up and you see these planes all the time and you're like, whoa, those things weigh how many tons Mm -hmm. and they're filled with you know 200 people and all their luggage Mm -hmm. and they're just floating across the sky and they're staying up Mm -hmm. you know i mean like like if you you kind of like open your mind to that or like how this big ship can just float in the ocean and not sink you know it's like there's these laws and there's these things that are beyond what we can see and fully grab maybe our normal mind around Mm -hmm. i mean you can dive into it a little bit more and then you can get it but if you just open that there's a reason why a plane can hold up in the sky we might not understand it, mm-hmm. but it's there. Yeah. Well, I think the the really clear point that I was gathering from that, which is super accurate, is that, you know, whenever you're intentional about anything, you know, the thing that came to mind was athletes. It's like where, you know, you, you attune yourself, you train yourself to become good at anything. It doesn't matter what it is. You put mm-hmm. your focus and your energy into that, and you are creating an intention to be successful and accomplish what it is you have set out in your mind that can be with anything it doesn't have to just be athletes it doesn't have to just be it could be any profession in life the point being is that when you walk into a massage when you walk into um, a reiki healing or anything of these natures you are creating a space you, you are creating an intention and a space for healing. Mm-hmm. You are creating this um, environment of this is what I am here to do. Where attention goes, energy flows. Mm-hmm. So if we um, allow ourselves to create that frequency in our mind of like, I am here to create a space of healing then what do you think is going to happen? Just like I am here to become a masterful footballer, you know, like I am here to become an incredible painter. It is all about um, application of mind, application of thought. And again, remembering that it's, it's so true, like where attention goes, energy flows. Um, what is so important about the practice of energy work and why it matters is that you know, your thoughts are frequencies. They're not thoughts. And I, I say mm-hmm. this all the time, even in the last podcast we, we did together, but it matters because these energy points, it's, it is where like your thoughts are plugging you in. If that makes mm-hmm. sense, like it's kind of what is holding up your understanding of reality and you can modulate that at any point. So if you go to a, a healer for lack of a better term, somebody who is working for to help mitigate stress management, Mm -hmm. um, they have taken the time to really create an environment of healing within their own self. You're now coming to them and they're able to share that their model of the world with you. Does it, does this make sense? Yeah. Yeah. They're able to create an actual environment of healing for people. And, um, certainly that is what I'm capable of. In many ways, I found myself on this journey as a healer um, it's gone through many stages and evolution to the point of where it is now just in my understanding of things and my relationship with it and it really has moved a lot more into just understanding that everything is frequency yeah everything is frequency and 
you can shift that frequency, you can modulate that frequency in any direction with intention, like mm-hmm. with, with whatever it is that you're bringing to whatever, if that yeah. makes sense. So, and, that, and, yeah. and then that a healer or um, a coach or anybody that you're working with can help facilitate and guide that to a different frequency. Yes. Really. So that's really what somebody's getting is they're breaking away some of the stagnant or the vibration that they're currently at and allowing things to move on on a higher plane Mm -hmm. so that they can have different choices different experiences different vibrations different day-to-day you know absolutely and i think let's let's talk about that because a lot of people i think don't know why they would get an energy healing mm-hmm. right Definitely. i think that's one of the biggest questions is like people look like deer and heads like energy healing you know <laughs> like and, and oh yeah you know once upon a time i've heard of that word reiki but they they're clueless and what that means mm-hmm. you know they might have heard of the word they might have heard of energy healing it's become more pop culture recently yeah um but they still don't know why would that be something that they do mm-hmm so you want to dive into that a little bit? Yeah, I just think that the the thing is, is we're born into certain realities and, you know, it, we're, we're, we're kind of taught certain frequencies or we're taught certain thought patterns or beliefs or ideology and none of it's ever right or wrong. It's just getting to a certain point in life where you're like, is this, is this okay? Like, am I okay with the way that my life is? Like, I feel this sense of stagnation. I feel a little bit like emotionless or depleted or depressed or tired or just a lack of motivation, whatever mm-hmm. it might be, right? All of this is an indication from the emotional body that there there needs to be growth. There has yeah. to be new ways of doing things. There has to, we have to bring in some new ideas, new patterns, new concepts of reality to um, kind of give, the, give an aliveness again, if you will. Yeah. Because if you're not growing, you're dying. It's very aggressive, but it's true. Like, if you're not actively participating in your growth, then you are actively participating in your death. And, you know, when you want to get healings is when you're just kind of feeling, like, uh, stuck. Yeah. I, mean, I have no other way to say that. Just kind of at, like, a, like this strange in-between place of, like, not really sure what's next or what's behind me. Maybe finding yourself having a hard time processing certain things or, like, trying to move past certain things or understand certain things so um healers like myself and like christina uh, it's we create an environment for you to address these things in a safe container you know and not just address it like talk therapy which is helpful and beneficial totally a place for those things but it also creates um a shift in the physical reality so it's like as a healer we have the ability to kind of look into the emotional field, the the seven main chakras is usually what you focus on Mm -hmm. and just kind of see like, okay, what's the relationship with with themselves? What's the relationship in their unconscious mind? What's going on back there? How are they communicating with the world? How open are they to receiving and giving back? You know, are they clear on their life path, their directions, their confidence? Yeah. You know, how is their sexual energy? Like how, because that's part of creation. How is their creative energy? You know, how stable and rooted and grounded do they feel in themselves? These are in your, you literally walk around with all of these truths within yourself at any moment, any time. And um, healers, like you just go mm-hmm. through different practices to really attune yourself to what these frequencies feel like. And and so you can see in part, you can see in people's bodies like, and oh, okay, and- yeah, like this is what's going on. They're stuck in this thought form or they're stuck in this reality or they're stuck in this emotion. Mm-hmm. And you literally with intention, again, intention is just, um, to, and to, to me, intention is a tool that allows progression. I like that. Because you are acknowledging what was, you're creating a container of what can be, and you are sending energy towards that. You're saying, this isn't, we're good. We want to remove that frequency. We want to remove that plug, for lack of a better term, or that emotion, and um, bring in the frequency of something else. So what's really interesting, a lot of my clients will report, I'm sure you've had this too, um, people can feel very different right after a session, like almost immediately. They'll come on like, I feel like 
high. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I feel different. I feel a little bit shifted. And guess what? It's because you are. And it's no different. When you go and get a massage, like, you go in with, like, with tension. You're carrying yeah. stuff. And when you leave, you're like, oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> like, yeah, no, it it's, 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 it's that yeah. same drastic type of change. And sometimes Absolutely. it can be more subtle. I mean, you don't have to create that as the only intention for it. But mm-hmm. if there is... A lot of this overwhelm, if you're constantly having these repetitive thoughts and thinking about what the problems are in your life and how there's no solutions for things and you're just running in the circle and that is manifesting as these stuck thought forms and this stuck vibration of energy and really like, you know, and that gets moved and dissipates. Well, now you can suddenly be aware of everything else that's going on inside of you, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. Now you can suddenly be in contact with the rest of you, mm-hmm. and you might see possibilities or solutions of which you were on a one-track mind before of only seeing, you know, like, which goes back to what you said in the beginning, is you constantly will see what you believe. 100%. You constantly, whatever you focus on, you'll keep on creating, right? Mm-hmm. You know? And yeah. So many people have talked about that, and it's not anything new. I mean, pick up any self-help book, but, like, why? You know, the there's a reason behind it and that that when you get in and it can click like a light bulb, you know, or a light switch, and it goes boom, you know, you get that, like, we are constantly, you know, seeking out what supports our view. Yeah, absolutely. We don't see the world as it is. We see the world as we are, and that's a massive place of accountability because you know a lot of people and I myself at different times we don't want to own that yeah we don't want to say like that the problems that we're experiencing in a way is what we are generating you know whether that be and that in no way mean doesn't mean that like people can do harm to you and whatever else so I'm not um you know, discrediting those things, but there's always a reason, always, without fail. I've been doing this professionally for five years. Mm -hmm. Like, there's always some sort of a component that has magnetized you to one situation or another, whether that be just for an encouragement of expansion and thought, encouragement for expansion and awareness, um, whatever it might be. Like, there's always a reason on some level why everything is happening around us in our present reality and I I choose to to really live in the space of opportunity Mm -hmm. no matter what it is you are going through there's always an opportunity for growth you enjoying this so far did you forget to subscribe make sure to do so takes two seconds just press that little button the red one you know the one just press it little like all right enjoy the rest of this content Again, it's like kind of the dichotomy of life. It's like in every situation, no matter how complicated or not, there is always, always an opportunity for growth or an opportunity for decline. You either spiral up or you spiral down. Yeah. And here is the truth. Neither one is right or wrong. <laughs> They're n- it's not. Yeah. But you do have the ability to use discernment. Do I want to spiral up? Do I want to step into a new space, a new level of understanding of myself and the world? Or no. Do I want to stay in absolutism and rigidity and kind of spiral down and kind of get into Mm -hmm. the trenches of life? And you know what? The truth is, no matter what you choose... It is your medicine. You're going to get what you need. You're going to learn. You know, I, I tell people all the time, we either joy through, we either joy, we either grow, I skipped a word, we either grow through joy and abundance or pain and struggle. Either way, we do grow. Um, but are we blossoming or are we wilting? You mm-hmm. know, are we growing into something new or are we slowly dying? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, and then mm-hmm. I think at any time in life, you'll probably go through cycles of, both of those hundred percent you know and Mm -hmm. there's gonna be times when you feel the you know you and and i and you see this you see this with people you see this with yourself you know like maybe spiral down for a little bit until you hit a certain point Mm -hmm. right and like a lot of times people uh say this in the addict and um 
alcoholic and addict's life is like, where's their rock bottom? Like sometimes mm-hmm. if they're not, they don't spiral down far enough. They don't hit that rock bottom to have that awareness to move and change their life, yep. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's one of the benefits of spiraling down in that kind of situation Absolutely. is hit that bottom so you can make that change, you know? Mm-hmm. If you're stuck in the middle, maybe you don't ha- have that. Mm-hmm. And then there's the opportunities of like saying, okay, like I like that, that it's, there's always an opportunity in everything. Because if, if you look at the inexperience that happens, you can say, okay, yeah, this is crappy, this is shitty, this doesn't, this mm-hmm. is, you know, painful, whatever the case may be. Or you can say, well, how does it serve me? Yeah. What am I learning from this? And how do I use this to excel myself further ahead? Yep. And I know that that takes some training of the mental faculty because, unfortunately, we live in a society that supports people more from when they're having a hard time than when they're having a good time. Mm-hmm. It's a very interesting society that's created that it's like everybody loves you when you're down, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, mis- that saying, like, misery seeks company, you know, yeah. it's like, it's, it's again, very hard um, to be fully empowered is a discipline. Yep, it's a devotion, and it's something that if you don't stay committed to, it will, it will diminish. Oh, you absolutely. Know, so, but think about yeah. it like fitness, right? Mm-hmm. So I've recently like had let myself go for a couple of years, and then now I'm getting back into my fitness routine. You should so not let yourself. <laughs> yes, I did. I was like, you should see me. I could barely run two laps, and <laughs> I was like, <laughs> we're going from playing on three soccer teams to that. Oh, but. It, Fitness is a really good thing. You know, at one point in time, I was in a very pivotal fitness shape. You know, I could bike ride for 20 miles, go play a soccer game and, you know, weight lift and feel great. Mm -hmm. But like if I wasn't staying on my health and I let myself go, suddenly, you know, like you feel that. And I'm Mm -hmm. sure at certain points, everybody's had ups and downs with that. But that's the same thing as being on top of, you know, being mindful and, and what you're saying is having that discipline in your life because, when you're healthy on a physical level, you can reap the benefits. You have more energy, you sleep yeah. better, you're more positive, you have all of these other aspects about life to you that there is a lot of benefits from being healthy. Does yeah. it take commitment? Absolutely. Now, if you can imagine that that would be the same thing for your mindset and for the way that you look at life, there's benefit to it. But if you don't practice it regularly, if you don't go to, if you don't work out regularly, you ain't going to have fitness anymore, Mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. I mean, optimization of the mind is a devotion. It is a discipline. It is a commitment. Mm -hmm. And there has to be a willingness to, to, to show up for that every day. You know, if you really, I always tell people like being in a state of, peace you know you never really want to like try to be in a state of happiness all the time because it's not actually a natural state of being you know it is I always just say like aim for balance aim for aim for acceptance Mm -hmm. aim for peace and I don't mean like peace like peace in the world you know like (laughs) I just mean I just mean balance yeah acceptance for what is and and what isn't and realize that you know at every step of the way here I am Mm-hmm. Okay, great. I'm happy to be here. I'm grateful to be here. You know, the, these are, believe it or not, like we live in a we live in a time where something as simple as the concept of gratitude has to be a practice. You yeah. know, it's like we live in that reality now, where something is the concept of joy kind of has to be a discipline. Like it's not a default anymore. It is a devotion. Yeah. And, and maybe, maybe yeah. it always was to a certain extent. I mean, I don't know, like but I mean, could be, yeah. it could have been. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's definitely needed, you yeah. know. And I know that it sounds sometimes people seem like say like, oh, it's silly or it's this or that. But I mean, like, if you get into that practice of it and that discipline, mm-hmm. and you train your mind, mm-hmm. like you train your body, yeah, it will work in that way. And it'll be easier and easier, and then the benefits come. 
Yeah. What are some of the benefits from having the discipline? Because I would say that you're somebody that has disciplined your mind. And what do you find that, you know, because a lot of people like if there needs to be a desire in order mm-hmm. to feel that they want to even take those steps. So sure. what are the benefits? Yeah. Well, you know, Christina said something earlier about sometimes like rock bottom is the lesson and the, and the, ne- the need. Right. So for me, it was like what started this journey kind of was like a rock bottom in a sense, not with drugs and alcohol, but just emotions <laughs> like super, super massive clinical depression, didn't want to take medication, nothing against medication, but just didn't want to. And I felt like I needed to explore different opportunities or different approaches, which is what led me to alternative therapies. And, um, you know, when I really started to do the work to uh, understand what were the root causes, what were the thought processes, the patterns in my mind that were continually giving me bouts of depression like Mm -hmm. there were there was thought patterns and beliefs that were somewhere in my conscious and unconscious mind that were you know pushing me into experiences of sadness Mm -hmm. and so for me when I explored these alternative therapies it started to give me new perspectives and new understandings and and tools and new ways of looking at things and new ways of experiencing things. So even past thought, um, we can learn through emotion, right? We can learn through physical touch. We can learn through the feel goods. You Mm -hmm. know, we can, we can learn not just in our mind, right? We can learn in our instincts. We can learn in our physical bodies as well. It's, you know, and that's where I always tell people like, do not kid yourself your brain is not the only thing that's working like your entire body is a brain and all points of you can teach you something all points of you have the ability to show you something right so some of the benefits is when you do uh practices like alignment coaching reiki whatever it is that you are seeking out there's there's worlds of practice there's worlds of uh alternative therapies for a reason yeah. And they've been around from the beginning of time for a reason. <laughs> so <laughs> the thing is, is that um, the, to me, the, the most important thing with energy work is that it exposes you to new ways of being through physical, mental, and emotional, all in mm-hmm. one setting. Okay? The physical part being you can absolutely feel the energetic current moving through your body when you are in a legit session with someone who knows what they're doing you can feel temperature fluctuations you can feel vibrations moving through a lot of people experience a sensation of actually like lucid dreaming kind of yeah like like you're floating yeah like floating exactly um so that flashes cold flashes 100 percent. yeah so that's the physical um the emotional is not only um do some practitioners like myself get a ton of visual insight, if you will, mm-hmm. to what is going on in the energetic body, but also the clients will get their own vision and their own memories and their own thoughts kind of playing out in their mind to self-regulate, okay? Yeah. Um, and then the the like spiritual, emotional aspects of it is we are literally bringing in new frequencies into the body. You know, it's like if I can see that somebody is struggling with Um, like insecurity like yeah I can and it's not me all practitioners have the ability to influence one frequency out and bring a new one in so Mm -hmm. well now and and I want to say yes a lot of practitioners can do that it doesn't mean that everybody is as trained and there's many different levels of practitioners and so the one thing of which has given this type of modality it's a bad rap is that there are a slew of people that can sign up now is because people have made this into a a money business and it isn't regulated by any type of organization that Mm -hmm. you have people that you know have devoted and spent years of their life going through their own healing their own training their own meditation practices doing like doing the work and also opening up their channels to become more receptive Mm -hmm. and be more in tune and then you have somebody that gets a certification online in a weekend and now now, they're a master now now they're (laughs) both a master and they're presenting their self 
And this one happens to be good with linguistics and puts beautiful things on their website. And this one, you know, it may be just as good or not, but you, you now you don't know who to pick. You're like, oh, this one sounds good and this one sounds good and they're roughly the same price and that. And then you go to somebody like this over in this realm mm -hmm. and you're like, wow, that hardly did anything to me and I didn't have any really feelings. And you know what? I'm going to dismiss it. Yeah. Well, that's why I think it's really, really important to do some discernment on who you go to. I mean, you can go and get your hair cut at a place for 10 bucks, and you can go and get your hair cut at a place for 250 and everything in between for a freaking haircut. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that the 250 is better than the $10. I'm not saying that either, you know, like, but... It, there's just there's going to be good hairdressers and there's going to be bad hairdressers. Mm -hmm. People are really skilled with the scissors and one that are horrible. But yeah. yeah, you know, it brings up a whole question. Um, and I know that we're like short on time, so we do have to be yeah. mindful of that. So, um, but you know, there there is a, a lot of things that have been going on in the spiritual community that. You know, to me is a little unfortunate, mainly because these things are so helpful. These things you don't understand. They saved my life. Energy work saved my life. Plant medicine saved my life. This isn't a matter of like, it was fun. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. oh my God, you know, like it actually saved my life. I probably wouldn't be here had I not had people who did the work themselves that really led, uh, led me in a safe container to discovering these things for myself. And, you know, the other the only other time in history that like comes to mind presently is we're kind of seeing like spirituality become the new religion where there's a lot of like, this is the correct way to do it. And this is the incorrect way to do it. And you need to dress like this and you need to talk like that. And if you don't do these things and you're not you're spiritual bypassing and it's like, oh, my God, you guys like. They're missing the whole they're point. They're missing the point. Like it's like about connecting and helping people. It it's just like it is. Like astrology is seriously real, and it's not real in the sense of like the planets determine your life. Okay, it's like astrology is a map that helps you better understand what are the energetic influences in my life. Can I succumb to those things or overcome those things? That is it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be all the branding and stuff that's around it that you see right it's it's just a map energy work is a way to deeper connect to your own self okay a way to manage stress levels in the body a way to ascertain clarity within oneself it doesn't mean that you have to wear all white and bathe in flowers and have a name like Mystic Mama, okay? Like, and, and absolutely, I mean absolutely no offense. My point being is like, that is all beautiful and totally okay, and there's nothing wrong with that, but there's also nothing wrong with being Bob who goes to a nine to five job, who has never meditated a day in his life, and to think that he can't be part of these experiences or that he is not a spiritual being, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. he he's not doing the work. <laughs> I mean, it's like, yeah, no, it's not I like think, that. I think it's, yeah. A, yeah, it's removing the judgment and knowing that, you know, in a way, as this is becoming more and more popular, there is, you know, before it was, it's weird and it's hooey wooey. And then now it's, oh, there's so many rights and wrongs that I'm so worried that I'm doing the wrong thing versus the right thing and that it's overwhelming, mm -hmm. right? It's a matter of, you know, we're spiritual beings, we're energetic beings. We're also beings that have mental faculty that needs to be shifted and our filtration systems are yes. very messed up, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so we need to be, you know, we need to help reprogram ourselves. We need to bring ourselves back into energetic alignment. We mm -hmm. need to connect with something greater than ourselves that right. is that we're all a part of. Yes. And it doesn't need to be anything more than that. Mm -hmm. And that can be met with t-shirts and jeans or it can be met with white if you want, but it doesn't need to be any way. I love that. It's so true. It doesn't need to be any way. You know, I think um, the important thing with all of this work is it's, it's about you discovering yourself. It's not about anybody telling you, oh, this is who you are, this is who you have to be. And it's, a, it's not like that. It's, it's you are coming to a space to connect to yourself. And you have to remember that when um, a healer works on somebody, 
they are not telling you something. You are showing them something. And the practitioner is only assisting and reflecting back to you what you are reflecting to them. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not like... Annalise the healer who has these mystical powers and is above anybody there is nobody better than you and nobody worse than you period Mm -hmm. okay everybody can do these things and everybody can experience these things it is just about a a willingness to want to self-discover that's it I went to I went down this path not because I was particularly looking for something to believe in I was looking to believe in myself. Well said. Yeah. And, you know, just through the process of going into this environment where people prioritize their well-being, people prioritized a better understanding of who they are, Mm -hmm. um, created an environment where I could do the same. Yeah. I mean, there... That is what we were talking about. And these practices, there, there's, there are a lot of things to it. Um, but I just, just step one, you know what I mean? Yeah. Energy practices, meditation, all of it. And, you know, I, I do want to say um, when you're do when you meditate and they've done a lot of uh, brain scans, I know I've mentioned this uh, to people before, but it literally changes the brain frequency so you shift out of the prefrontal cortex and you you move to the back lobe of the brain activating the theta and delta which is the brain activity most associated with sleeping Mm -hmm. when you are doing energy work it's the same thing it it literally shifts the brain activity to the unconscious mind for the person that's having the work done on them and this is where the container of healing begins to happen where they can self-regulate regulate and they can kind of see like in their own way like whoa like now I understand it's it's like a strike of awareness yeah so um yeah I know we're kind of jumping all over the place but but I like that and uh, Mm -hmm. you know bringing that back together it's it's showing that you know when you when you are ready to step onto this and I think if you're listening to this or somebody sent this to you it might be something to explore Mm -hmm. and you know um even though everybody can um tap in and have healing abilities and you can and you can experience and everybody can experience I would say use some discernment with who you work with you know um Annalise is always available for remote sessions um we have some great people also at Liberate um but you know like there's you know or if there's anybody if you're 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 around or you're somewhere else and you're looking for somebody to go face-to-face local um but have discernment you know but then also know that you can you can that anything in life can be shifted and i think that that's the biggest thing you know that just because you're muddling in a situation or circumstances or thought forms or whatnot it can be changed yep your vibration can change your energy can change those thought forms can shift your life can then as a result can change so quickly in an instant too because if you just think about your own experiences in life you know, you could wake up one morning and be super happy and feeling really good. And then, you know, somebody could cut you off on the road. And what's actually happening is like your your perspective is being influenced. You know, it's like your your experience is being influenced. And then, you know, if you haven't done the work to self-manage and self-regulate, you could very quickly then go into that frequency and stay in that frequency of it being annoyed and frustrated for the rest of the day. So you have to realize, like, you can change your mood and your emotional space and your energetic imprint like that, like yeah. literally that quickly. And if you're going to a space where somebody is, like, tr- properly trained to facilitate a proper space for you to realign and recalibrate, it's amazing. Yeah. It's seriously amazing. I, I mean, and that has a huge domino, domino effect on everything else in your life. And if you go 100%. back with this, like, cut off example, mm-hmm. how many times have we had a negative situation impact our life? Maybe we got a bad email. Maybe we heard a bad phone call. Maybe somebody literally cut us off in traffic. Mm-hmm. And something happened, and literally a snowball effect happens in the negative. Yes. But that can happen in the positive, too. 100%. You know, like, mm-hmm. it's just we've 
realized and had it shock our system so much in the negative that we're aware of that and how that like leads, you know, it's almost like that, that saying like, oh, if, if you, if somebody wakes up and they're like crabby and grouchy and say, go back to bed and wake up on the other side of the bed, you know, like it's, <laughs> totally. it's like, it's, like, it's, it's, but you know, having that container and that space, you know, magic can happen and you can view it as magic or you can view it as your own power that you're stepping into. Absolutely. I love that so much. It's, it's very true. And again, you know, a really great practice that you can do at home right now is like when you wake up in the morning, the very first thing you ask yourself, instead of letting your thoughts tell you how you want to feel today, ask yourself this one simple question. How do I want to feel today? Hmm. And make a devotion to that. Make a commitment to that. I love that. Yeah, because it, I mean, it's that is that is what we're talking about. You know, it goes back to the intention. This is what I intend. Intention is so important. This is what I intend without expectation, meaning I am holding this intention for this to happen in, in a certain way. However, if it doesn't turn out the way that I intend, then all I know is that I am fully in trust that it is taking me to a place that's even bigger than what I can understand. I love that. Yeah. So it, it, this is where like these practices, this is what it means to optimize the mind. It means that instead of allowing your emotions and, to, and thoughts to control you, you are now an active participant in how you want to feel and how you want to perceive reality and you show up for those commitments you show up for those disciplines you show up for that you show up for yourself you show up for yourself and as a result you know i say this all the time what you do for yourself you make possible for the world around you if your healing is not just for you it is for everyone mm. because how you experience yourself consequently is how you experience the world and if you really do the work to love yourself and prioritize yourself what what's naturally gonna happen if you're in those frequencies you're gonna see and experience everyone else that way yeah you're gonna care a lot I love that yeah so that is why this work matters <laughs> and on yeah. that note where can people find you Annalise um, you can find me at AnnaliseMindset.com. Uh, read a little bit more about my history of how I arrived to where I am. Um, and, of course, learn a little bit more about my services and what I offer. Um, my contact is on there. Um, also on social media, Instagram, uh, at Annalise Cherie, and all the names will be yeah, down the, there. Yeah, they'll be all down there, but just in case you're listening to it mm -hmm. on audio only. So we like to have it all out for people yes. too. Perfect, perfect. Well, if you like this, please comment, share, like, you know, all those things. Algorithms are real in our modern day society. So, you know, even a little thumbs up or a smiley face in the comment, that even helps a little bit more than just pressing the like button. Um, and so help us help more people spread this awareness and create more amazing content. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Until next time. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in, in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self. You are S-E-L-F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free.